Welcome to Blooming Wildwood Homestead and our week two pantry challenge check-in. I hope that things have been going well for you and I would love to hear in the comments down below what are some successes and some challenges that you've been facing along the way. Even if you're not doing it perfectly, are there some days where you are spending more time eating out of the pantry rather than purchasing extra food from the grocery store. Any day that you're able to do that is a win. This week has gone pretty well for me. It was definitely a game changer to be able to have planned ahead and adjust for what I knew was going to be a really busy week. Today I wanna to share with you a few tips about ways to organize your home canned goods. As we're planning for this upcoming year as far as the garden and as we will be approaching canning season before all too long, it's good to start thinking about your storage solutions. And if you already have canning storage in place, hopefully today's tips will be helpful in improving or making that a little bit more useful for you. And I'm also going to share with you an easy recipe that is great for a weeknight quick meal or if you are going to be outside or gone doing something you can throw it in the crock pot as well which is what I will be showing you today. So let's hop to it. The first thing you want to keep in mind is that you need to make sure your pantry is located in an area that is easily accessible to where you're going to be using the food. For me, I've made a mistake before of keeping the food in a location that was not close to the kitchen and it's kind of an out of sight, out of mind sort of deal. You forget that you have it available, you forget to use it and you're not rotating things in the proper way if you've forgotten that you even have it to start with. So I recommend keeping your pantry close by. If you have a root cellar or a basement where you're going to be keeping your items, make sure that you have some place close to the kitchen where you can keep what you're immediately using just to make things a little easier and more readily accessible when it comes time for cooking. Once you know where you're going to keep your pantry items, you want to make sure that you have it in a dark location. You want to keep the light off of your canned goods to try and help preserve them as much as possible. When I moved into this house, there already were shelves available to use, but I just didn't know how I was going to organize it. I didn't have my stuff ready to go. And so I've had some of my canned goods in different locations and it's created a little bit of a problem. So I kind of am taking this time right now. I know it's winter, but it's a good time to kind of go through and organize your pantry to make sure that you're using the food that you already have canned and it'll help you to see what you need to be working on for the upcoming summer. Are there some areas where you have big holes and gaps already? Um, or are there some items that you already have a ton canned and you just need to plant some items for fresh eating? You don't really need to worry about canning that item this year. This is just a great time to take stock and really see where you're at. So one of the first things that I'm going to be making over when it comes to the pantry area is this curtain. This is just an old sheet that I hung up here in order to keep the light off of the food. This is a porch off of the kitchen and I made curtains for the windows that I have back here. And so what I'm going to be doing is sewing a more functional curtain to go across my pantry area so that it's just going to be a little bit easier to use. But when you're getting started or you just moved in a location, you do what you can. It doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to look amazing. You just do what you can with what you have. The main purpose here is functionality. I was really fortunate with these shelves here. My dad actually put this shelving unit together and he custom designed it so that there are smaller shelves that will fit the pint jars and then larger shelves that will fit the quart jars. Again, when I moved in, I did not really know where I was going to put things and how I was going to organize things. And this caused a bit of problem for me because I ended up with some of my canned goods that I brought from my urban location out in a storage shed and I didn't have them available inside to be able to use. And I have filled up the nice shelves with other items. So I've got some rice, 
dumbbells. They have no business in my pantry. Some other canning things, some things for seeds. Old potatoes, seriously. What I wanna do today is get all of this kind of peripheral stuff out and I wanna make sure that all of my jarred home canned items are on these shelves and easily accessible so that I'm making sure I'm using everything that has been canned and preserved. If you are getting value from today's video, please don't forget to click the like button and we would love to have you subscribe and follow along with all the things going on here at the homestead if that's something that interests you. Today's recipe is chili and there are a few different options for how you can make it as i already said you could do it on the stove top right when you get home or you could throw it in the crock pot and have it available for later in the day or if your family was going to be eating in a shift like style maybe you've got a lot of um, activities going on after school and so you're gonna have shifts coming through to eat this is a great option for that as well for today's chili all you're going to need is um some chili sauce. I already have some pre-canned. I'm using up some older chili sauce from 2016, but it's still in good shape. So we want to make sure we get that used up. Um, I'm going to throw in some onion. I like to use spicy sausage, but I've also used hamburger, really just a matter of preference. And then you can use some kidney beans. I don't have any of my own uh, canned kidney beans today. So I'm going to be using what I have on hand, which is some white kidney beans, and we will throw that in as well. Now that I browned up the sausage, I'm gonna add most of this to the crock pot. This particular sausage is lean enough that I didn't have to drain off any fat, but if yours is a little bit fattier, you'll wanna drain it first before adding it. And then I'm gonna reserve a little bit back for my breakfast. Next up, I'm gonna add my rinsed and drained beans. As I said, I didn't have any home canned beans my real preference would be these guys right here. These are some cranberries, uh, cranberry beans, and they are perfect for soups or chilies, anything like that. I just didn't have them soaked overnight, and so I had to use what was convenient for today. Then we're going to add in our chili sauce. Give that a good mix. And then I'm gonna let that go ahead and cook all day. If you decided to do it on the stove top, you could probably let the flavors meld together for about 20 minutes, simmer for about 20 minutes, and then it would be ready to eat. So super easy. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe. You can serve the chili with either a cornbread, um, a side salad. If you have artisan bread or something like that on the side, it really doesn't matter. Or just the chili by itself is quite filling. Another canning tip is to make sure that you accurately label with your jars with both what's inside as well as the date that it's been preserved. This is going to help you with your rotation. Just like we expect product to be rotated at grocery stores, you also want to do the same thing with your canned items. Otherwise, you're going to be using off of your newest items first. This is another reason why you need to keep all of your jarred items together, if at all possible. I had my brand new salsa from 2021 inside the house in my storage shelves here. And I had older salsa from 2020 out in the storage shed. And so I've been using off of the brand new salsa instead of my older stuff because I didn't have it all in one location. And 
it wasn't readily accessible. That's something that I really need to have cleared up today. You also wanna make sure that you have a plan for your empty jars. I don't know that I'm gonna have space in this pantry area for my empty jars. So I'm going to keep the Metro racks that I have out in the shed and I'm going to put my empty jars out there. I don't wanna have my full jars in that area. It's not heated and it's not they're not able to stay out there in colder temperatures. So that's why I need to make sure everything is inside. And also just because if it's out of sight, it's out of mind and I'm not using it as readily. Um, but your empty jars, they can stay out in a shed or on some other type of storage container. It's just going to make it a lot easier to organize your space. Do not put empty jars in front of full jars. Speaking from experience, I've done that before. And then you're digging out empty jars in order to try to find the product that you want to use. If you are going to store everything on one shelf space, make sure that you pull things out and put the empty jars to the back or reserve shelf space specifically for empty jars so that you're not ending up with a problem of burying some of your canned goods all the way in the back. Thank you for staying until the end. I hope that you gained some value from today's pantry organization tips and maybe the recipe will inspire you as well to plan for a quick weeknight meal. Until next time, bye everyone.